me and not feeling safe, period, with women or going through the same thing, it being weaponized with them. Like that was just like a sad case because it's like now you have all of these men that have trust issues. So if you come across a woman that is a safe space, you think there's an ulterior motive. So mm -hmm. now you won't even open up to and so this woman that it can be a safe space. So now it's a repetitive cycle. And so most of the men were not even open to saying, okay, well, I know a woman did weaponized it, so I need to heal. They were just like, never do it in the story. Mm -hmm. You know, go to your homeboys, go to you. When in actuality, it depends on the type of circle you have. Because depending on the men that you have, if you have men in your circle, they just gonna steer you off the cliff as well. So mm. when most of the time the women, if you have a good woman that can be a safe space, she's gonna give you that safe space and she's gonna give you better advice than your homeboy that's just as traumatized as you are. I will say this though, something I noticed in the comments from women, unfortunately, there was a sense of men should be more brave and enthusiastic about sharing, full stop. There wasn't any moment to pause and be like, okay, I understand where y'all are coming from. I understand you guys' fear. It's like, the, the energy seemed to be, and men have experienced this in our lives too, like, stop being a bitch. There wasn't any consideration as to why we're so hesitant and we don't believe you. Absolutely. And I will say, I'm glad you said that. Something I saw as well, um, the women saying, oh, well, we should be each other's safe spaces. That's a given. But a lot of times the woman is the one that puts that at the top. Mine mm. is more important than yours when that's not true. Mm. Both of you should have a safe space, but that's what we lead with. At mm. least I know I do. I need a safe space. But what about his safe space? So a lot of women are like, well, you got to be both. That's deflecting. Because mm. you're right, but... That's not what we're talking about right now. <laughs> we're talking about his, because the biggest problem is with, when you look at the men or talk to the men, as we saw in the comments, mm. thousands of comments, that's a huge issue. And that's a huge eye opener for me as a woman. I was just reading like, this is terrible. Mm. And I had a hand in this. You know, I had to take even more accountability. I've had a hand in doing this to a couple of men. So mm. now I add it to these comments. They might not be commenting, but in actuality, if they saw this, they would probably comment. Jay, what's your thoughts on this, man? Like, what, what do you feel like is at the core of men's general distrust of women, especially when it comes to expressing ourselves? I think that's one of those, I think you hit it on the head in terms of that as far as who's more important in this this matter. And this is where a lot of relationships fail. It's funny because I, I was just addressing this topic earlier that you can say, well, my feelings are more important. My happiness is paramount. My happiness matters. And that man's happiness doesn't matter as long as you're happy, right? <laughs> and before you know it, he's gone or moved on with another woman, you know, and didn't let you know, which is, to me, is insecure at the end of the day. You shouldn't, you shouldn't rock like that. But this is how a lot of women, they were like, I thought everything was good. I thought everything was, you know, fine because... Women will tend to say, well, didn't you see the signs? As far as men, to men, didn't you see the signs? There were signs there that she was unhappy, but not so much. As long as your needs are being met, you know, he's listening. It's a soft space to land, things like that. And sometimes you're just with the wrong person. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people, as we said, I think we said offline, or I was kind of getting that, mm -hmm. some relationships last longer than they should. You know, and people try to hold on to things sometimes that shouldn't really be there. But I think, you know, toxicity, trauma, things like that, people sometimes tend to view it as being normal. You know, it, it, and until they get until they start associating with other people, having realistic conversations with people who have healthy relationships, they'd be right. like, man, this isn't normal you know, to be cheated on, to be called these names, to be gaslit mm -hmm. and tell me that, oh, you're crazy. And, you know, as you say, stop being a bitch, <laughs> you know, stop being a hoe. Yeah. You know, my last boyfriend didn't act like this. A real man wouldn't do this. Okay, sis. Because women will call in a moment when she gets mad, she'll start, you know, trying to uh, call it gaslight and call this man names to make mm -hmm. him seem less than, you know, because he may feel like in a moment, you know, hey, I, I figured I could talk to you about this. And she may be like. Eh. And honestly, I feel like that's what that's what's complicated about this this conversation, because based on my conversations and interviews with women. I would say 90 percent of women 
severely overestimate how good they are. Right. And I think it's partly because, like, I, I wish I could just say, oh, it's women's fault. But I think it's our fault in the sense that most men, when they are unhappy, won't just leave. Mm -hmm. We'll we'll grit our teeth. We'll especially if we're married, we we go try to you know hold on because we don't want to lose everything. Right. If we're in a relationship, we don't want to look like the bad guy. We don't want to hurt her feelings, whatever the case may be. And it's only until cheating happens mm -hmm. or or something worse happens that now it's like oh he was just a shitty person. Right. Because not only do we not have the ability to express our displeasure and our dissatisfaction. Um, women don't feel like we even have the right. So a lot of times when I hear women talk, it's like, I did all this, 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 and this, and he cheated on me still. When it's like, if you go and talk to that man, you realize, yeah, she did all that stuff, but like, she talked back, Two sides she didn't story. respect me, whatever the case may be. And unfortunately, I cheated. You know, I stepped out, another woman, she rubbed my back or she cooked for me, my girl didn't cook. But again, that side of the story often isn't told. So she's le uh, she's left to feel like she's a saint and she didn't do shit wrong. And it's just Darnell was a shitty nigga and, and Brian was a shitty nigga, this, this and that. When the common denominator is, for whatever reason, you ran them off. Mm -hmm. Most women hold back on sex in relationships for men. That is true. They too. never, they never, they never acknowledge that. Don't you bring know, that up. It's a weapon. It's a weaponization. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? You don't do right. You ain't getting the sex tonight. You mm -hmm. know, you don't do this. You ain't getting the sex tonight. So a lot of times, with men, men get tired of that. Mm -hmm. You know, then the relationship, you know, it kind of splits off. You know, you got him in his room, she in her room. Mm -hmm. You know, the disconnection starts to happen, mm -hmm. and the woman will never take accountability for that. Right. Like, hey, you know, I was trying to make up with you, but you, yeah. you know, you ain't trying to give me no booty. <laughs> so he, it's like so so at the end of the day then the man going to cheat right because after a while he gets tired of that same old saga you know it's an in and out thing for most relationships I see when I talk about that's the case mm -hmm. the case and, and, is and, the, the woman hold down on sex and the, the worst part about it like especially on social media it's certain videos that I'll see go viral like it's one I saw the other day uh, this dude um, he had a side-by-side -side picture of himself. One, he had long hair. The other, he had patches in his hair. Mm -hmm. And he was like, um, uh, after my girl saw another girl compliment my hair, I woke up like this. Right. And I'm like, yo, if you switch the genders, mm. this nigga's in prison. Mm. But you see women get away with mm -hmm. all this stuff. Yeah. And it's almost like, it's a, it, there's validation to it, especially in the comments. Like, yeah, that's what he gets. Celebrated. Don't look at no other bitch. In it. yeah. And it's like, yo, if you flip it, this is domestic violence. This is a mm. shitty man. This nigga don't care about you. But when it's a woman, she's passionate. Right. Mm. She love you. She yeah. don't want to let you go. Mm -hmm. And it's like, yo, how, how, how do we reverse this? Man, unfortunately, man, uh, it's, it's difficult for... Well, we, we go back to talking about why... Like Shanika was saying, men to have a safe space with women. Mm -hmm. Men are very analytical. You know, we analyze things. A lot of times we analyze things so deep where we're looking at the woman that we with. Mm -hmm. If she's not changing things that we know she should change naturally without our input, mm -hmm. we step into a state of judgment. Mm -hmm. You know, because now we're like, you know what, she won't do it on her own. If I try to give her the tutelage to help her do it on her own, then it becomes argumentative yeah. or more control. It's more like, I'm not trying to control you. I'm trying to elevate you mm. so that you don't find yourself in a certain position in life. Mm. Women don't look at that today. They look at it more from a point that we're trying to control the narrative of their life. <laughs> it's like, I'm not trying to control yeah. you. I'm trying to you know, elevate you. It's a difference. But men, it's, it's almost like what you was talking about, about the here analogy, mm. right? If a woman changes her hair, she's never satisfied. Men look at those things as if she ain't happy with the hair, she ain't gonna be happy with me. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how many times she gonna change the <laughs> hairstyle? It's, it's almost like we may yeah. use it as a reference to her being, you know, changing the men out that way. You know what I mean? Most women do that. I think, I think the worst part for me though, is like, if, if a woman falls short in a relationship, the idea, uh, at least the public's idea is that the man failed in some type of way. Mm -hmm. Even if she cheated, he mm -hmm. probably wasn't paying attention to her. He wasn't attentive. He might have cheated first. The mm -hmm. immediate assumption is 
he deserves it mm -hmm. or, or he didn't provide an environment for her to be her best, most optimal self. But the reverse is not the case. Mm -mm. If he cheated, it's because he's a shitty individual, point mm -hmm. blank period. Yeah. There's no, there's no thought of where she failed or how she wasn't accommodating of him mm -hmm. or how whatever the case may be. So it's almost like the only human in a relationship is the woman. Yeah. The only person who's deserving Sympathize. of consideration or sympathy mm -hmm. is the woman. Mm -hmm. And I think that's part of the reason why a lot of dudes check out. Because not sure. only do women not think we should have standards, we don't think we should have standards. We don't think we should have expect. We blame ourselves. If her pussy not wet, it's my fault. Yeah. <laughs> If my dick don't get hard, it's my, my fault. fault. <laughs> Without a doubt. That's true. You see what yeah. I'm saying? But yeah. if we're having a conversation and I'm mm -hmm. trying to have a conversation with you, and it's like, you want me to listen to you, but you don't want to listen to me. But it's, it's, it's still your fault. It's still though. your fault. You didn't yeah. create an environment yeah. for her to be attentive. Exactly. And this, this, and that. Yeah. So, nigga, how, how do we reverse this? <laughs> how, how, how do we, because it's not sustainable. And especially, yeah. I think, with the passport bro movement, because mm -hmm. men are realizing that. They don't have to tolerate this. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the sad part about it, because a lot of dudes, especially on the internet, they're saying that, oh, dudes are going um, because um, they're prostitutes. They're prostitutes here. Mm -hmm. Dudes are going because um, the, the single mother rate is high here. One of the highest single mother rates is Colombia. But they're still going because it's like, at least she's nice. Right. At least she's feminine. So like we, we keep being so dismissive about these problems and we're not even willing to tackle it head on. But how do we start to kind of move in the opposite direction? Well, you know what my favorite word is. Account being accountabil accountability, yeah. period. And looking at it as a human being, taking the male and the female off as a human being. You don't treat a person like the golden rule, treat a person as you want to be treated. Yeah. So don't look at it just as a man, woman, but as a human being, you know, would you, should you talk to someone in this manner? Should you treat mm -hmm. somebody in this manner? So it goes back to accountability, yeah. I think, really, just holding yourself accountable and just really looking at the situation, you know, like, and that's hard to do if you're broken, if you've been through, if you've had men. And I had a conversation um, a couple years back because as I've aged, I ain't going to tell you how old I am. You know, <laughs> there's a little wisdom that came with that. But I had a conversation with a young lady and I told her, you know, I don't think that all men that cheat are dogs. You can't label a good man can cheat if you are withholding from him in the bedroom and you're sending him out to the wolves daily, eventually he's going to crack. That's like sitting a Thanksgiving plate in front of a homeless person and wanting that homeless person to sit there and look at that, but they can't touch it. Oh, some of them will tell you to go do eventually, it. Eventually mm. it's, it's going to be, they're going to, it's going to come to a point to where it's, I just can't anymore. Whatever consequences that come with it has went out the door because I need to fulfill this need. Mm -hmm. Men are physical. That's how they bond. That's how they keep the bond. That's how they feel like they show their love. So if you deprive him of that, he feels rejected. So he's going to go to wherever mm -hmm. he feels accepted. No matter what it is, he's, the consequences are going to go out the door, depending yeah. on the time frame. So it's mm -hmm. about accountability, just accountability and treating somebody as a human. You want somebody to flip it on you. Now, yeah. if he tell you no... <laughs> That's a whole different, you're cheating, what you got going on, what are you doing? You, Cause I've been that woman. Mm -hmm. Say what? what? No, yeah. <laughs> what you mean? <laughs> well, Ali, let me ask True. you this. Like <laughs> what, what, why do you think, especially in your age group, why do you think it's so difficult um, for women, especially young women to empathize with men and consider the world from our perspective? I feel like maybe we don't just, we don't understand Mm. Because I feel like not every At this age I feel like some people Are more mature than others So it's like How can I understand you If I don't understand myself mm. 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 Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. A part of me Just give you a little pushback I don't think it's a matter of maturity I think Literally We don't see men as people And we definitely as hell Don't see black men as people mm. Black men exist to serve and die and work and, and pamper and love you. Like I saw, I saw a post the other day, um, uh, a girl tweeted like, I can't wait till I have a boyfriend so I can cook for him and he can buy me purses and he can buy me cars and a house and the whole nine. And somebody commented like, women negotiate like the British during colonialism. Mm. I was like, this, mm. <laughs> you want all this stuff for little to nothing. Mm. 
-hmm. Because again, we as men, and you know, a part of me is at peace with that. We Mm -hmm. exist to serve. Mm -hmm. We exist to die. We exist to be a human shield, Mm -hmm. right? So I don't think it's a maturity thing. I, I, but I do think that this next generation of boys, especially boys being raised by women, they, they, they are not enthusiastically signing up to be like, um, I'm going to give you this, but I expect you to give me this, 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 and this. So how are you seeing that change, especially with your generation? Are you seeing dudes, y'all call them sassy now, mm-hmm. dudes being more um, adamant or vocal about their expectations from women? Or what they not gonna do? Um, not necessarily, but I also feel that social media plays a big role on more, more not more so how we feel, but I feel more of like just a guy just has to provide. So it's not necessarily saying, oh, he's supposed to buy me this, buy, but social media says it, so mm-hmm. he got to do this for me for him to be a man. But we never think about their needs. We just think about, mm-hmm. okay, well, what can he do for me? Not what can we do for you. What do you think our needs are? Hmm, I was about to ask that. <laughs> Let's talk about it. Yeah. You got time to think now, and you got mm-hmm. you know way more experience mm-hmm. than her, but what do you think our needs are? Um, I f- well, what I've been realizing is most times y'all just want someone just to listen and understand. Like a lot of times we think it's always, it's about sex, it's about cooking. Sometimes you just want someone to just sit down and just actually just understand you. Say, okay, you had like more so not where I feel like, you know, a lot of times we want y'all to come and just say, oh, we had a rough day, instead of just going based on your, like, you know, your body language, like, you know, you didn't have a good day today, just want to just put that foot forward and just do things already without speaking. So I think just more of just understanding and just being that safe space, because I know for me, I felt like I wasn't a dude safe space, like, I thought I was just the perfect person, and I'm just like, okay, well, why can't you ever open up to me? Why can't you ever talk to me about how you feel? And I was sort of like, okay, well, that's just... Maybe he's talking to somebody else, but it's just like, what am I doing for him not to feel that he can open up to me and speak to me? Mm-hmm. And you know, that's interesting because, like I said, men are very analytical. We analyze things. So when a woman asks their men uh, why you don't open up, why you don't talk, what he's saying is, I don't trust you. That's basically what he's saying to you in so many words. Because any man will open up in his right mind to you if you felt like he could trust you. So there's something that happened in that relationship that deterred his trust from you. And men, we take that personal. If you give us one little slight inch of we, we can't trust you, Ooh. it's going to take a minute for you to get oh, that we back gonna, if we you ever get, get it that. back. We're going you know? to get to that. But before I go to you, I think um, the best way at least I tell women to think about it is um, our feelings to us is equivalent to your vagina to you. Mm-hmm. Meaning that If somebody forced you to give them vagina, that would be considered rape. Mm -hmm. So when we hear women say, talk to me, express yourself, it's basically (laughs) raping him (laughs) for his feelings, Mm -hmm. right? But we don't think about it that way. And I think that's why there's also a disconnect with um, how men uh, can more, I guess, readily cheat or want to have sex with somebody. Women look at it as, oh, you must like the girl. Whereas Mm -hmm. we're thinking, oh, no, she just... Serving a purpose. She's different. She's a different vagina. You know, not even better vagina, not even wetter vagina, just different vagina. Because again, for us, it's 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 not as sacred because we're not being entered. Mm -hmm. Let's be real. It's easier to go to somebody's house than invite them to yours. Mm -hmm. Let me clean up a little bit. Where you been? Take Mm -hmm. your shoes off before you enter. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And I think that's why there's that um there's that disconnect. And I feel like if, if women could extend that same empathy and understanding that you want me to have when I'm trying to get your vagina and I have to make you comfortable, right? We have to go on X amount of dates. You know, mm-hmm. you got to meet my folks. I got to meet your folks. There's a, there's a process, mm-hmm. especially if you're a woman who was raised right in the whole nine. But it seems like that same, um, mm-hmm. that same deference is not given to men's emotions that we're told we're, to, we're told to safeguard the same way you're told to safeguard your chastity mm-hmm. right yeah what do you think men need um first and foremost respect mm. um that's gonna stem off everything respect and honor um and you can respect him mm. and honor him as a man that goes above all things and then balance um 
men, like you said, they're always worried about their emotions, worried about the world, worried about providing, worried about being a good father, good husband. So you, they need a woman that can bring balance. Like she said, a woman that can pay attention and be thoughtful. You come home, you're not saying much and you're tense. So I'm not going to come in here and nag you and say, why you got an attitude? You came in here and didn't you say, how you doing? Then you're going to go in there and say, well, you want me to get, start, get your bath started? You want me, what do you need? You know, and just speak to him without speaking to him. You don't have to ask him nothing. Mm -hmm. Because when you provide a certain space, he's going to enter just easily but right. a lot of times we get what's wrong with you who missed it must be the other woman <laughs> and then like, we catch an attitude and then we mm. catch an attitude so now he's like i had a rough day at work i gotta you know and 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 now it's a whole blowout because but i think they just need balance you know somebody that can just balance them out that can listen to the vision listen to the idea listen to the goals and to help bring that into fruition and and, and a spin off of that i feel like a lot of women they they always asking, what do you want done? Versus just providing it. Mm. Like a man ain't gonna ask if the tire got a flat, hey, you want me to go put air in the tire? He gonna do it. When you come back, the tire's full of air. So we're doers, you know what I'm saying? Like we, we serving, right, constantly. So a lot of times when we come in the house, the woman be like, you want me to rub your feet? I don't mm. want you to ask me that. You just wanna do it. I just want it done. Right. I don't want you to always have to ask me what I want you to do, because if I say no or even if I, if I don't even pay you attention to it, then it gives you time to back out of it. You know what I'm saying? You mm -hmm. ain't want to do it anyway. You just want to feel me out and see most of the time, men, you know, we paying attention. Yeah. Just do it for me. I don't need you to ask me. It, just do it. I think I think something that um, at least I've experienced that, that's mm -hmm. made me slightly insecure during a relationship is. You know, we, we as, as boys, we were taught women are sugar and spice and everything nice, right? Mm -hmm. She's every woman and, and the whole nine. It's all in her. But subconsciously, we believe that if you are him, she will naturally be her. Mm -hmm. You see what I'm saying? Like, if you are him, mm -hmm. when you come home, she's yeah. thinking that. Mm -hmm. If you are him, uh, um, she's naturally going to fit herself into a position to improve your life. Mm -hmm. So I th one of the things I've experienced mentally is like, I remember Drake said, I guess I'm not that influential. I guess I'm not him. Mm -hmm. But a part of me also realizes that a lot of that intuition and, and every womanness that we were told women have, is, mm. it doesn't come as naturally as we think. Mm -mm. It, it's not as magical as motherfuckers lead us to believe. Mm. Yeah. And I think I'm personally still working through that grieving process. Yeah. 